about it. Can you bully a grown man? Hell yes. Yeah. I feel bullied all the fucking time. I just got bullied right now. A motherfucker that should be knowing what the fuck I'm doing around this time every fucking Wednesday will call. That's no. A, it's a bully tactic. Hmm. Interesting, hmm. Inter- interesting theory. I can uh is it a bullying tactic though? Yes, it's to it's a it's to mitigate it, it, your importance. It's, it's to make a motherfucker, oh, you're you're doing something. That I should remember because I say I care, but I don't really care. So I'm gonna show you I don't really care because I don't give a fuck that you're doing something at this exact same time for the last four years. I have four <laughs> years to acclimate to this time. It is manipulative and it is trying to establish prioritization over your interests above all else. And it happens all the time. My ex almost mm-hmm. died on a Wednesday. And she said, I was going to let her die because I knew she was dying. And I wouldn't answer my phone. Not the fact that I was in the middle of a broadcast, but I didn't answer because she was in the hospital dying. I was psychic. I saw that she had got hit by a boat. <laughs> you knew about that in Lake Michigan. I remember that. Yep. You supposed to have known about that. Spent all night in the goddamn hospital getting cussed out. Next three months, nursing the bitch back to health. And now she won't even talk about 2019 at all because she would have to say a lot more than she's willing to admit. Like, you can't have an overcome story. <laughs> like, hey, look, hey, look. <laughs> It take it take a spiteful motherfucker not to want not to want to talk about they triumph because you was a co-star of that motherfucker. I finally somebody sees my viewpoint, <laughs> and then it make me crazy for mentioning it. And I'm like, nah, I'm not. No, nah, I'm not crazy. I know because you know a motherfucker want now a motherfucker almost died. A motherfucker was on the news, and I know that motherfucker wants to talk about this shit, but. Then they'll have to talk about how I, me, couldn't sleep in the fucking dark for three months because she, I had to wait for her to go to sleep. She would have to talk about this shit. She would have to talk about how I used to carry her to the bathroom and shit like that. So the Overcome story gets a lot tricky. Hey, look, because because the Overcome story goes from a point where I couldn't even take myself to the bathroom. I couldn't go to the bathroom on my own. And they're gonna say, wow. Hey, who was by your side helping you get to the bathroom and you couldn't get there on your own? Oh, this motherfucker that I've been disparaging for the last three years. Ooh, yeah, that'll fuck up. That'll fuck up the interview at that point. So what yeah. happened? It'll be kind of because what happened? What did we do? This and then you gotta explain what the motherfucker did, and it was because he left the milk out twice. This motherfucker that I've been nagging for three years, the the motherfucker that I'm basing my whole overcome story, the motherfucker that I overcame. <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, it'd be like Brian's song without. Uh, well, hey, look, full disclosure, I never saw Brian's song. So, uh, whichever the one that was not the one that died. Yeah, Billy D. Williams died. I think I don't know. <laughs> it's been so long since I seen Brian's song, goddammit. Man, hey, look, that's one that you don't repeat. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> that's what I watched it. And that shit, I don't think I saw that shit ever, like a whole time through, ever. Man. I, or at all. All I had was Channel 9. I've seen all of that shit. I'm with you with the TV. But yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Hey, you, you'd be surprised how many movies that you don't remember past the climax. Hey, hey, you you know what? Well, I ain't going to say past. You don't remember up until the climax. You know, because you have to remember the exciting part or the pivotal part, but 
Is it because we are not allowed to show our emotions that we disconnect so heavily from emotional content? Uh, I don't think so, because fucking Medea bases her whole existence off connecting through emotions. Is Medea a man thing? Oh, you talking about men? Yeah. I mean, anger is an Because we talking about us being bullied, my brother. Conversation together. Yeah, I, no, I thought it was all adults, though. I didn't know it was just men. No, nah, you bully a grown man. That was the thing. I, yeah, I know you said grown man, but I, I took it all adults. <laughs> oh, my, no, no. My profile. No, yeah. no. We'll put it in my mind. I was, I was, um, I was um, watching the, the Hill, and they was talking about this guy named Evan uh, Seyfried. Well, I don't know how you pronounce his name. I think that's about it. Uh, Evan Safery, he was an uh, employee at a Kroger grocery store or whatever. And uh, he was getting harassed by his management. And they was doing all kinds of stuff to him and whatnot. And they increased their tactics. And it eventually drove him to the point where he went to Kroger for help. He asked him to help, help him with mental health services and stuff like that. It kind of went unanswered. His reports about them, I think, kind of went unanswered. And he ended up ultimately killing himself behind it. Behind the treatment from his managers at work, he ended up killing himself. So that's what put the question in my mind. Can you bully a grown man? And like, yeah, you can. Yeah, mental stability is fickle. It it ain't no age limit on mental stability. You can attack. It's the misnomer of bullying or the connotation that we put behind the word bully. Mm-hmm. Kind of makes it adolescent, but you can antagonize someone for sure. Like and a mother. And apparently antagonize someone to suicide. So if we want to make give, give that the moniker of bullying. Hey. I mean, like I said, we just put a connotation of, of youth on the word bullying, but bullying is just a simple simply the act of antagonizing another human being. Mm-hmm. Like a motherfucker. It's definitely it's definitely that. I think you can I think you can bully a person and I don't think that their reaction is necessarily um gonna be all the time suicide either. I think people react to bullying, they shoot up shit. Cause they yeah. the bully, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, we. I had a discussion last week about right and wrong, and uh, I think we talked about it about uh, you put a bunch of babies in a room and you smack one of the babies, and that's how you know that smacking is wrong. But every baby isn't going to inherently be traumatized by the act. Some babies are going to learn the art of hitting. In Some that babies area. are. So, yeah, mental stability is fickle. It's a case by case basis. But an- antagonizing someone, yeah, you can't do that to an adult, especially an, an adult not built for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, it tied back in what we were talking about earlier before we started. Before we started, we saw about um, how we communicate. Can you? Um, how did you? How, how was you saying it? Can you berate somebody into doing some shit? Like uh, the tough love aspect of it. Oh, uh, yeah. Can you? Uh, uh, yeah. Tough love, a motherfucker, for like a better term. Can you? Uh, yeah. Can you? Uh, into motherfucker into success. Into success. Does that work? It's a case by case basis. You know, some pre- mm-hmm. what they say, pressure must bite. Press also make diamonds. Yeah. yeah. It just depends on the material that you made out of. Hey, hey. Gonna be. Hey, hey. The brother that's sitting there busting his ass working, you know, 80 hours a week, trying to, you know, provide for his family, giving, giving his wife what she wants. That motherfucker could, you might want to ask that man if he being bullied, you know? Into doing some shit that he don't really want to do. Provide, provide me this. Give me that. I want this. That might not be certainly might not be necessarily what he wants in life, but it's what she wants in life. 
And now he got to provide it for her because that's what she's demanding, even though that's not what he wants. Is that bullying? Phil, hey, what up? Phil said, what up? Any, what up, family? Anyone can be bullied if they feel intimidated in any way. But okay. what, 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 what I'm just saying is, is it just intimidation? Could it yeah. just be pressure to perform? I.e., a wife putting a lot of pressure on a husband to get. But bullying has a connotation of uh, not being able to escape it. A marriage is a union. That's a that's something you choose. So in that in that in that instance, it wouldn't necessarily be bullying, though it can be antagonistic. What about what about what about to the brothers out here that say, you know, man, we got that ring went on her finger and she changed. That's the same woman I married. I mean, again, yeah, that that's opinion based thing but that wouldn't necessarily be bullying because you would have to accept the outcome you can also separate yourself from that situation so but isn't that indicative of all bullying though no you can't a child couldn't necessarily transfer schools the man couldn't necessarily quit Kroger I think it'd be I would I would think it's easier um, I would think it's easier to quit your job at Kroger than it is to get a divorce or for that kid to change transfer classes at his school to escape this bully that's in his room, or even transfer schools if it's necessary. No, you over, can... over get over. Not saying that those two things are easy, but over getting a divorce. I mean, again, that's opinion based. We're talking about the actual act of I can leave today with no recourse. I can leave in this instant. I can look you in your face and walk away with no. So you, okay, but that's not a marriage, though. It is a marriage. No, fam, ain't no way in hell you you gonna have a marriage where you can't. I'm uh, uh Candace, put them comments up before in a second. I'm gonna get to them right in right quick. Ain't no way in the hell if you gonna have a marriage where you can just be like, hey, yo, look, I'm gonna peace out, and it just be you could do that. That's philosophical. That is what you can do. You you talk of philosophy. I'm talking about tangibly. I can get up and leave with no recourse. All right. I think you might be hard pressed to get that one. But let me get to these comments. Uh, Phil said real quick. Um, he said pressure is different, but if a person fears the person enforcing that fear is bullying, then I guess that is what it is. He said uh, the man might feel might not feel like he can leave his wife or vice versa. Definitely when you codependent on the person or just fully dependent on the person to provide or give you stability or whatever, definitely. Uh, in a domestic situation, bullying would all would be abuse. But, hey. Bullying has to have some minutiae to it, to the other party. Like, it just can't be what you feel. There has to be some intent from the other party. Intent being feel attacked. Well, hey, what the intent is How's the intent intent different? I want your sandwich. I want you to do what you got to do to give me the beam of the Bentley in the bed. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That, I mean, again, she might go, I want a Birkin bag, and you need to. You ain't shit if you don't get it for me. Now you feel you got to get that in order to be worthwhile. <laughs> All right. Well, that that changes from pressure to an uh, an actual act, a tangible act. You, you're giving it some recourse. Now when you put those monikers on it, yes, it has, now it has recourse. But just Man. a marriage Man. in itself, no. You say what? I say just a marriage in itself, no. But with, under the context you just added to it, yes. That oh yeah, I'm not saying a marriage in itself. I, mean, I got a marriage. I don't think I'm bullied in my marriage. Shit. No, I, so I don't think marriage that, but I'm just saying so when, someone it can be a, when someone puts up an intimidating factor, then yes, it, it, it can tend, lean towards bullying, but not just but, you two are married. But even without like an intimidating factor, just like any other shit, um detrimental like emotions toward the motherfucker, that can be a way of bullying. Like, I mean, all right, yeah. so if you don't, 
I'm I'm not gonna ask you to do it. I'm just gonna keep saying you should do this. And then if you don't do it, then I'm I'm gonna be pissed off at you or I'm gonna react differently towards you. And it's manipulative and which is technically bullying. I mean that's manipulative and you have you have action to that. You don't have to stay there for that. Your job, you just can't up and walk out that motherfucker that day. You have it's is is procedure you have to fall follow. In a marriage, you can go get a hotel room that second. In a marriage, you can go sit on the porch, call one of the homies. You can distance yourself in that moment from that situation. Man, I don't know, how you, think, I don't know how you think that you can't be at a Kroger and and it's easier to walk away from a marriage than it is to say, hey, yo, look, I quit. It come off your register that day. Because come out the stock have- room that day. I don't know what else you would, I mean, come off the I don't know what whatever else you do at a Kroger, come off of that and just walk off that day. Like it can happen. I've never been me personally, I've never been in a position where I was somewhere where I was getting money where I could just leave that money on the table that instant. There was no situation. I and I'm, I'm not familiar with jobs, so I couldn't say job, but I've never been a place where I could just leave the money on the table. I had to Plot my exit strategy. If a motherfucker is antagonizing me in my marriage, I can leave right then and there. Hey, hey, look, hey, look, hey, look. I feel you. It's but that's a. I don't know. Uh, to me, I think that's a. I, that's more of a you thing. I think it's more. I we got the. I, it's an individual preference. I would think it'd be hard to leave a marriage though. You don't have to leave the marriage to leave the antagonistic situation. You can't leave. I mean, okay, well, you, can, you don't have to leave your job. You can walk away from this person talking to you. And they can follow your ass. <coughs> the the your, your 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 spouse can follow you too. So what are you saying? No, they can't. How they can't? Uh, if you leave, if room you room walk room out room the room house, the spouse can't follow you. You get the, the multitude car, you of ways that they can't follow you. Those. What? The multitude of ways that you know that they can't follow you. Those. I don't, I don't know how you're making this less difficult than a job situation. I really don't. Because you can get in your car, because niggas get in their car and pull off all the time. I could do that at the job, man. What are you talking you about? You're fired. Okay. Me being fired means more to me than me being me being divorced. See now you talking f- philosophy again. I'm talking about actually feeding yourself. Hey, look, you can get another. You, I, I think you can get another Kroger level level job. That's just me personally thinking. I believe so too, but I believe it's gonna be some motherfucking meatless nights. Pause between. <laughs> I don't know. I believe your bitch arguing you go get your dick sucked like instantly with zero recourse. You can just leave, go get your dick sucked and come back happy. That's if you have a dick sucker lined up. Hey, look, I don't know how you... I don't even think you have to have one lined up. I think you can go to multiple places and get a dick sucked. I don't know what life you live in where that is no recourse, man. I don't... Mm. Damn, thousands of marriages. Like, we not finna play that game at all. No recourse? We're not or thousands no, of marriages. No recourse or no chance of recourse? I mean... what? Well, I didn't say no chance of recourse. I said no recourse. There's always <laughs> chances of everything, I then. I say no recourse. Niggas, I think niggas, it might be recourse. You, lead, you, you, you get into a fight or whatever, you leave the house. I think it might be recourse. You, hey, look, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If you can go get it and go do it and get away with it, and that's what you want to do, by all means, go do it. But all I'm saying is it is possible to bully a grown man. Definitely is. Definitely is. Hey, now I have this question. Could another grown man bully you? Yes. 
Yeah, it's yeah. possible. Mm. You can you can line up any situation where a, a person can be bullied. There's no there's no bully freeable situation. I think and I have how we view you being the fucking subject to say a bully. That that that's probably the only place there is for discussion. Mm, I think I got bullied. We're gonna feel differently. I got. I think I got bullied when uh when Logan was born. <laughs> and your wife or by Logan? By one of the doctors. Oh shit! Oh shit! Hey, look, motherfucker told me. <coughs> hey, look, after after he was born or whatever, right? You know they have to do the procedures they do or whatever, and it be kind of like people around and they be moving and it be stuff. Motherfucker told me to move around. <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, basically, he tried to say that I was in the way. What? Like I felt like he thought I was like a, a little motherfucker. Like, like move. Like what? Wait, what? But I couldn't. But I couldn't. Like wait, what? Like because I was holding. I was holding the boy, and I had just got him, and I didn't want like one of my first interactions to be you dropping him. Negro, <laughs> let's go. But hey, look, hey, look, hey, look, hey, look. Negro centric. The, 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 the doctor was about. He was about. He was Danny DeVito's height. Minus about eighty of Danny DeVito's pounds. <laughs> oh shit! Now imagine his life beginning with a nigga moment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey! What hey. is that trajectory? <laughs> hey, I felt fairly confident that he could just had a ringside seat to all of it and been fairly secure. But I also felt that it's probably not the best thing to do. Like at first, with your kid in your hand, I think that your kid should have a couple birthdays before you whoop somebody ass while you're old. <laughs> hey, you ever punched a nigga with a baby before? <laughs> no, hey, I didn't mean no, to punch a no, nigga no, holding the baby. You punched a nigga holding the baby. I you mean, punched, you, you had the baby in your hand. For a while, you were holding the baby. No, like you had, your, like your, on the end of your fist was the baby, and then you hit this nigga in the face. You ain't never oh, punched nigga with a baby before. Oh damn! Well, you took it somewhere different than where I was. Hey, look, exactly. I made a Parkinson's joke. I mean, I can't make a baby punching joke and a Parkinson in the same night. Like that'd be way wrong, right? No, it would never be pretty much what you would expect from this podcast. <laughs> the only way it could be wrong if you made a punch of the baby with Parkinson's joke. <laughs> that, that would be wrong. If you made a Doc Brown going back to the fucking future and punching a baby. Hey, look! Hey, look! Hey, look! Hey, look! I can. It's somewhere. It, it's somewhere that. It's somewhere, somewhere to tell that joke that where it's acceptable. Where Doc goes back and punches Biff in the face as a baby. Some I think that could be. I think that could happen. Some way you could go back in time and punch Michael J. Fox as a baby. You could break <laughs> the wall and take a character. Christopher Lloyd played Doc Brown and punch a baby Michael J. Before he even has Parkinson's, mind you, you're punching a baby Michael J. Fox. Hey. <laughs> hey. So, Hey, that'd be fucked up. Uh, speaking of short, 